Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be simplifying an algebraic expression. We have x plus y plus z equals 0, and we're supposed to simplify this expression where we have the sum of second powers, sum of fifth powers, and sum of seventh powers. So we're going to be getting a numerical expression uh, at the end, let's see what happens. So, since this is going to be pretty complicated when I expand it, so I'm, I'm going to call this expression number one, this is going to be number two, and this is going to be number three. Let's go ahead and work on each one separately, and then we'll put it together. So number one, I'm going to replace, since x plus y plus z is equal to zero, I'd like to replace z with negative x minus y, right? And of course, it can be written as the quantity x plus y multiplied by negative one. So let's go ahead and do that here, and let's see what happens. I have x squared plus y squared plus z will be replaced with that. Well, when you square that expression, it is going to be the same as x plus y quantity squared. So let's go ahead and simplify that expression now. x squared plus y squared plus x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. Now when you add like terms, you're, you're going to be getting 2x squared plus 2xy plus 2y squared, and that can be written as 2 times the quantity x squared plus xy plus y squared. That is my first expression. Now, in my second expression, I'll do the same thing. Let's go ahead and write it first. My second expression is the sum of fifth powers, and I'm going to replace z with the opposite of x plus y. So let's see how that plays out. When I replace z with this, or I can use the other one as well, this is what's going to happen. I can take out a negative 1 to the fifth power is going to be negative 1, so I can just pull out a negative sign, and that's going to look like this. Of course, in this case, I have to take x plus y to the fifth power, and our, we're going to use binomial theorem. But let's go ahead and do the third one as well, and then because we're going to make some changes here. This one is the sum of seven powers, and what we can do is replace the z with the opposite of x plus y, which is this one, and of course we can plot a negative 1 from here, just like the fifth powers, it's very similar, we can write it like this. Now notice that this, the second expression, which is being subtracted from the first one, has more terms. So it would make sense if I uh, negated both of these, because it'll be easier to handle, in my opinion. So let's go ahead and do that. Since they're being divided here, as you can see, this one is being divided by, this one is being divided by that, it's not going to matter if we negate both of them. Okay, let's go ahead and negate the first one. The first one is, I mean the second one here, right here, my second expression. If I negate it, it's going to be x plus y to the fifth power. Now you have to be careful because you have to subtract this, and that's going to give you negative x to the fifth minus y to the fifth. Let's go ahead and simplify this. We're going to use the binomial theorem for x plus y to the fifth power. And remember, the coefficients are going to be 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, and 1. These are coming from the binomial coefficients, you know, 5 choose 0, 5 choose 1, 5 choose 2, so on and so forth. So it's going to give me x to the fifth power plus 5 x to the fourth power y plus 10 x cubed y squared plus 10 x squared y cubed plus 5 x y to the fourth power plus y to the fifth power. And from this I'll, I'll subtract x to the fifth power and y to the fifth. These two are going to cancel out and these two terms are also going to cancel out. The rest of the terms have a common factor, obviously, because we have 5 as a common factor as well as x times y. So we can take out 5xy here, let's go ahead and do that, and if we do, we get x cubed plus, from here we're going to be getting 2x squared, right, y. From here we're going to be getting, when we take out an xy, uh, we're going to end up with x squared y, and from here we're going to be getting 2xy squared, and then this is going to be y cubed. Okay? Great. But obviously, we can also pull out more terms here, because this is basically factorable if it can get better, right? Obviously. So what we're going to do next is just uh, express uh, this expression, factor the second one. So let's go ahead and do that, since we already negated. So here what I'm going to do is, I get x cubed plus y cubed, that can be factored as x plus y, times x squared minus xy plus y squared. And these two expressions that has a 2 in them, we can pull out a 2xy, and that's going to be multiplied by x plus y. 
Here x plus y is a common factor. Let's pull it out. We get x plus y. And the rest is going to be x squared minus xy plus y squared plus 2xy. And that's going to give me, because I have negative xy plus 2xy, that's going to become positive xy. So we're going to be getting x squared plus xy plus y squared. Remember this expression also came from the sum of squares. So this is my second expression. And I'm going to, I'm going to do the third one here. Of course, I'm going to negate it first and then simplify it. So let's go ahead and work on our third expression here. My third expression my third expression originally was x to the seventh plus y to the seventh minus the quantity x plus y to the seventh power. But we're going to multiply this by negative one because that's what we did to the fifth powers. So it's going to look like this. Of course, when you subtract this as an expression, they're both going to be negative. Let's go ahead and simplify this the same method. This time we kind of have to deal with larger numbers though. So x plus y to the seventh power. If you think about the binomial coefficients, you're going to get 7 choose 0, which is 1. 7 choose 1, which is 7. 7 choose 2, which is 21. 7 choose 3, which is 35. And then 7 choose 4 is going to give you the same thing as 7 choose 3. And then 7 choose 5 is going to be the 7 choose 2, which is 21, so on and so forth. So we're going to have the following coefficients. 1, 7, 21, 35, 35. It's just going to go back. So let's go ahead and expand this, see if we can fit it on uh, one line. So this is going to be, the first term is going to be x to the seventh power plus 7x to the sixth y plus 21x to the fifth power y squared. And then I have 35x to the fourth y cubed. Again, 35, but this time switch around the coefficient. I mean the exponents like this. You see the symmetry. And then I get 21 again, but this time switched around to n5. And then I have, after 21, I should be getting 7, which is going to come with x and y to the 6. And finally, I get y to the 7th power. That concludes the binomial theorem here. And then from here, I'm going to subtract x to the 7th and y to the 7th. Of course, these terms are going to cancel out and these are going to cancel out. So we are kind of, we ended up with a gigantic expression, but don't worry, we can simplify it. How do we simplify it? Well, we're going to first of all try to factor out the greatest common factor and then after that we'll try to factor that expression. I'll probably give you what it is because I don't want to keep it too long. So let's factor out as 7xy which seems to be a common factor here and this gives me this gives me x to the fifth power plus 3x to the fourth y plus I'm going to be getting a 5 here right x cubed y squared plus 5x squared y cubed, they're just going to switch around because that's what happened before. With the 21, I'm going to be getting 3xy to the fourth power. And then finally, I'll end up with y to the fifth power. Okay, now this expression obviously can be factored, but how do we factor that? First of all, we kind of need to put it together in a nice way. And we're going to do that next. Let's go ahead and do it. First of all, notice that I have x to the fifth plus y to the fifth. Then I have these two terms, so that can be factored out like 3xy, you can take it out. You're going to get x cubed plus y cubed. And then these two terms have a common factor of 5x squared y squared, and they'll be multiplied by x plus y. Notice that all these terms here have x plus y as a common factor. So let's go ahead and factor this part, and then we'll uh, include the 7xy in there. So x to the fifth plus y to the fifth. That can be factored as x plus y multiplied by x to the fourth minus x cubed y plus x squared y squared minus xy cubed plus y to the fourth. Let me go ahead and do this together uh, on different lines and then I'll put it together. So 3xy, we can take out an x plus y here and then it can be factored. The rest can be x squared minus xy plus y squared. And finally, I have the 5x squared y squared multiply by x plus y. Okay, so that's pretty much what I get from here. So what I notice here is that I have x plus y as a common factor. And again, we didn't include this one yet. At the end, we're just going to append it. So what, what I can do is fact, factor out an x plus y here and then write the rest of the terms. Let's see how that plays out. x to the fourth minus x cubed y plus x squared y squared minus x y cubed plus y to the fourth. And to this, I'm going to be adding plus the three x y times x squared minus x y plus y squared. And then I have plus 
5x squared y squared. Okay, this expression is pretty messy, but don't worry, we're going to simplify this at the end. Okay, let's see how this goes. So I still have an x plus y here, and then the rest of the terms are going to look like the following. I have x to the fourth power. Now we're going to get some like terms. For example, I have a negative x cubed y, and I should be getting a positive 3x cubed y from here. So that means I'm going to end up with 2x cubed y. So this is taken care of, and this is taken care of. All right? And then what, what else do I have? Well, it looks like I have an x squared y squared, and I'm going to be getting a negative x squared, a negative 3x squared y squared from here. So that is going to be negative 2x squared y squared. So this is taken care of, and this is also taken care of. And then I'll be getting xy cubed, right? So when I multiply 3xy by y squared, I, I'm getting 3xy cubed. If I subtract 2, that should give me 2xy cubed. So this is taken care of, and this is also taken care of. Well, I guess I have a, a 5x squared y squared here, which I forgot to add, but that's okay. We can do it later. And then that's going to become, actually, I can just go ahead and change it here. This is going to become positive 3 because I need to add the 5 as well to this. That's going to make it 3x squared y squared. And of course, I'm going to be ending up with y to the fourth power. Great. Now, this expression still looks somewhat complicated, but I'll tell you what it is because it's going to take a while to explain, and maybe this could be done in another video. But this expression right here can be simplified if you divide uh, both sides by, set it equal to 0, divide both sides by y to the fourth, and then you're going to get a quart, um, quartic uh, in x over y, which is symmetrical, and that can be simplified. Again, that's a long story, so let me just give it to you. It is x squared plus xy plus y squared quantity squared. And that is going to be my third expression. So, of course, don't forget that we have a 7xy here. So, let me add that after that. I'm going to call that third expression. So, my third expression is going to look like this. 7xy multiplied by x plus y. Let me double check that. Okay, that's good. And this is going to be our third and last expression. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to put it all together. Let's go back and remember what the first expression looked like. Our first expression was this one. Okay, here we go. So we're going to have two times the quantity x squared. Let's go ahead and write it down here. Two times x squared plus xy plus y squared. For the fifth power, I have another expression. Let's go ahead and put that together. It is going to be 5xy and then x plus y. 5xy and then x plus y, and then I'm getting x squared plus xy plus y squared. And then at the bottom, at the bottom, I have my seventh power, which is right here, 7xy multiplied by x plus y, and that is multiplied by x squared plus xy plus y squared quantity squared. And guess what happens at the end? Happy ending. x plus y cancels out, xy cancels out, this quantity cancels out, and we end up with 10 over 7, and that brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.